Hi, this is George from The Return of the King. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Great Pyramid of Egypt and the Sphinx. This complex of three pyramids and the Sphinx is not what most people think it is. I'll then show you how the coming of the Antichrist is connected to Egypt, not to the pyramids, but to the rituals performed by the Egyptians to deify the pharaohs to make them gods. Both Washington, D.C. and the Vatican have put in place the physical structures that the Egyptians used to incarnate the pharaohs with demonic entities. On the day I'm looking for the rapture to occur, the 15th day of the third month on the Jewish calendar, which is June 15th, 2022, Jerusalem time, the three pyramids line up precisely with the three stars. Venus, the bright morning star, which we are told in the book of Revelation is Jesus, aligns with the Great Pyramid. The Bible talks about an altar to the Lord in Egypt. In that day, there will be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar to the Lord at its border. It will be a sign and a witness to the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. When they cry to the Lord because of their oppressors, he will send them a savior and defender and deliver them. For you have set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt until this day. From the Oracle Set in Stone by Daniel Matson, According to the scriptures, God has placed wonders in Egypt to be a sign at the return of the Lord to save humanity. This would be the second coming of Christ at the end of the tribulation. This altar is said to be at the border, but yet in the middle. Giza means border, and it is at the border of Upper and Lower Egypt. Therefore, it is also in the middle of Egypt. The Great Pyramid, the last remaining wonder of the ancient world, is located in Giza. The nature of the Great Pyramid and its complex makes it the only real candidate fitting the prophecy found in Isaiah. This would pertain to the time of the Second Coming when Christ returns to deliver the oppressed. On the day of the rapture, the Great Pyramid of Giza aligns with Venus, the bright morning star. The estimated height of the pyramid is 480 pyramid feet. The difference between a pyramid inch and an imperial inch is only one one thousandth of an inch. They are almost identical. The capstone to the Great Pyramid is missing. Jesus is the stone the builders rejected. It was the last stone to be placed in the temple, the capstone. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Today's height is this. If we subtract the estimated height from today's height, we get 26.888. The value of God's name is 26. The value of the name of Jesus in Greek is 888. Now there's no way the value that came from subtracting the two heights can be that accurate. When I did the math, that is what I got. The Jewish rabbis believe there are no coincidences with God, and maybe this is the case here. The most likely value is 26, which is the name of God. These values lend credence to the pyramids being the altar of God spoken of in Isaiah. If we take the number 153 from the account of the 153 fish and multiply times pi, we get 480.664 feet, a difference of only 2 inches. The account of the 153 fish is confirming the day that Jesus is coming for the fishes, the Christian. The 15th day of the third month on the Jewish calendar, which is the true date of Pentecost, the Great Pyramid appears to be confirming this too. For on the 15th day of the third month this year, the day we are to be watching for him, the pyramids align with the three stars. Pi, the value used in calculating the height, appears to confirm the date. We leave in the third month. Our last day here is on the 14th, and on the 15th we leave, our first day in heaven. It's believed that the head of the Sphinx was that of a lion, 
the body of the Sphinx is more eroded than the head, implying the head was changed and added later. Plus, the head is very small in relationship to the body. Here are some depictions of what the lion may have looked like. This is the view of the heavens at dawn on the Feast of Trumpets, the feast day in which the tribulation begins. Leo, the lion of the tribe of Judah, is rising in the east. Venus, the bright morning star, is rising due east. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The Sphinx, originally a lion, is facing due east. Watching for when, the lion of the tribe of Judah will return to take his kingdom back from the ruler of this world, Satan. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. When the lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus, opens the first four seals, the tribulation begins. He releases the four horsemen. The entire seven years is the wrath of God, as it is Jesus who opens the seals. In the book of Daniel, we are also told the tribulation will begin with the signing of the covenant. And he will make a strong covenant with many for one week, and for half the week he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall come one who makes desolate, until the decreed end is poured out on the desolator. Notice what verse it is in Daniel that gives us this information. It's verse 927. The Feast of Trumpets begins at sunset on 927. So this looks like a hidden prophecy telling us when the covenant will be signed, on the day it should be signed. Jesus' ministry lasted three and a half years. The Jews had three and a half years to crown him their king, but they did not. They will give the crown to the Antichrist, the false Messiah, for three and a half years, and they will worship him as their king. The true king, Jesus, is being crowned in heaven, and Jewish kings at their coronation always have their bride with them. We are the bride of Christ. The idea that the pyramid complex is the altar of the Lord spoken of in the book of Isaiah appears to have some merit. Next, I want to look at the symbols and physical structures used to incarnate the Antichrist. This is the Antichrist from I Pet Goat 2. On his forehead, he has the all-seeing eye of God, which you also find on your dollar bills. It's part of the Great Seal of the United States. It's the capstone to the pyramid. The capstone represents God. Satan wants to be God. The video I Pet Goat 2 is about the coming of the Antichrist and the New World Order. The figure you see here is the Antichrist who has just been birthed. The sun is rising, the dawning of a new age. To the left of the sun, you can see the tail of the scorpion. To the right of the sun, the phoenix rising out of the ashes. To the right of the sun, the pyramids. If the pyramids are not the altar of God, then why does he do this? The first thing the Antichrist does is destroy the pyramids, starting with the Great Pyramid. He destroys them because they are the altar of God, as we are told by the prophet Isaiah. In a scene prior to the last one, the Antichrist is in a boat. We see fishes headed up towards the Antichrist. The fish swim up from the depths and then jump into the boat of the Antichrist. In the account of the 153 fish, the fish are taken out of the sea and brought to Jesus, symbolic of the rapture. This is to save us from the red dragon of Revelation 12 who dwells in the sea and who wants to devour us. The dragon is Satan, the Antichrist, the beast, and the beast system. After we leave, the Antichrist will force those left on the earth to take the mark in order to buy or sell. Also, it causes all, both small and great, 
both rich and poor, both free and slave, be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark, that is, the name of the beast or the number of its name. What you see here is the Antichrist. This is from Zechariah 11, 16 and 17. For behold, I am raising up in the land a shepherd who does not care for those being destroyed, or seek the young, or heal the maimed, or nourish the healthy, but devours the flesh of the fat ones, tearing off even their hoofs. Woe to my worthless shepherd who deserts the flock. May the sword strike his arm and his right eye. Let his arm be wholly withered and his right eye utterly blinded. This is the Antichrist rising to power. Notice occurs on a full moon. We leave when the moon is full above the tail of the scorpion and escape from the beast system who is about to sting us. Someone has to explain what happened to all the people who disappeared. Who better than the Antichrist himself? This is the view of the heavens from Jerusalem at dawn on the morning of the rapture, June 15th, 2022. It's the 15th day of the third month on the Jewish calendar, the true date of Pentecost. You cannot use pagan Sabbaths to bring you to the day of Pentecost. The Sabbath must be calculated from the sighting of the new moon. The sighting is day one. The Sabbaths are the 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th day. Every month you do the same thing again. Jesus, in the account of the 153 fish, is confirming to us the true day of Pentecost, the day in which Jesus will take the fish out of the sea, the Christian, before the red dragon in the sea, from Revelation chapter 12, who dwells in the sea, can devour the fish, the Christian. He also takes them out before the start of the tribulation, before he begins to judge the world. The heavens read from right to left. The planet Jupiter, representing the Christian, is in the constellation of the Christian Pisces, the fishes. It has taken 1,726 days to arrive in the constellations of the rapture. 726 in Strong's Greek concordance is the word harpazo, rapture. This is on the day that Jesus is telling us to watch for the rapture. Mars, a red planet, is in the constellation of the red dragon, the dragon in the sea. Jesus, the bright morning star, is in the constellation of the Lamb, Tale, and at the same time in the constellation of Taurus, Christ the Judge. To those of us on the right, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Our Savior. To those on the left, he is the terrible and fierce judge who is coming to take back his kingdom from the ruler of this world, Satan. On the morning of the rapture, we have the moon representing the Messiah in the constellation of the rider of the white horse who has his bow pointed at the scorpion, symbolic of Christ who during the tribulation will destroy the devil and the Antichrist. At the end of the tribulation, it will be Jesus, the rider of the white horse, leading the charge, and his bride will be following him on white horses. Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe, dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. On the day of the rapture, and in the day Jesus rose from the grave, the moon is above the tail of the scorpion. Paul, in 1 Corinthians 15, speaking of the rapture, says this, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? Hebrews 2.14, speaking of Jesus, 
that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil. In 1 John 3, 8, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. The scorpion represents the devil, Satan, the beast, the Antichrist, the whole beast system. The Antichrist is believed to come from the tribe of Dan. The constellation of the tribe of Dan is the scorpion. We're going to look at just this group of seven eclipses, three of which are in the constellation of the Antichrist, the scorpion. There is a series of seven total solar and lunar eclipses before the start of the tribulation. Joel tells us the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, the tribulation. These eclipses warn of the coming tribulation. The tribulation begins with the rider of the white horse. Three of the eclipses involve Taurus, Christ the judge. It is Christ who is found worthy to open the seven seals which release the four horsemen. Three of the eclipses are in the constellation of Scorpio, the constellation of the Antichrist. The constellation of Scorpio is the constellation of the tribe of Dan. It is believed by many theologians that the Antichrist will come from the tribe of Dan. The heavens support this view, and so does I Pet Goat too. And the last blood moon is in the constellation of Judgment, Libra. This last blood moon before the start of the tribulation is a total lunar eclipse for half of the United States, including Washington, D.C. The entire layout of Washington, D.C. is set up to incarnate the Antichrist with Satan himself. Both Washington, D.C. and the Vatican have these identical structures, a dome building and an obelisk. The dome building represents the womb of Isis, and the obelisk, the phallus of Osiris. Washington was designed to deify the Antichrist to put a spirit in him. That spirit will be Satan himself. The physical structures to energize and empower the Antichrist and the false prophet from the spiritual realm come from Egypt. The deification of the pharaohs occurred in Luxor, Egypt. In 2017, a total solar eclipse crossed the United States. In 2024, a second total solar eclipse will cross the United States. And where do the eclipses intersect? In an area known as Little Egypt. Solar eclipses can mean judgment coming to the world. Egypt is a type or symbol of the world. The name Little Egypt came from the early settlers of the region who thought the area resembled the Nile in Egypt due to the low-lying topography, fertile marshes, and flooding from the Mississippi and Ohio rivers. Notice the names Thebes, Cairo, Karnak, Goshen Way. On August 2, 2027, two years prior to the end of the tribulation, a total solar eclipse will pass over Luxor, Egypt. The eclipse is centered directly over Luxor. The place that the physical structures to energize and empower the Antichrist and the false prophet originate from are Luxor, Egypt. The day of the rapture is the 15th day of the third month on the Jewish calendar, which is June 15, 2022 on the Gregorian calendar, the calendar in use today, set up by the Catholic Pope Gregory in 1582. We leave on a full moon. The Antichrist comes on a full moon, the day we leave. On the day of the rapture, when we add up the dates on the Gregorian calendar, we have 6, 1 plus 5 equals 6, 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 2 equals 6, 666, the number of the Antichrist. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who is understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. So on what day did the Pope, the false prophet, come to power? 
This is from Tom Horn's book, Zenith 2016. Just like the great seal of the United States, the number surrounding Pope Francis's election kept coming up 13. White smoke at 7.06 p.m., 7 plus 6 equals 13. He is 76 years old, 7 plus 6 equals 13. He was elected on the calendar date 313.13, which sports two 13s of its own. 313.2013 also yields when we add it to the number 13. He was announced at precisely 8.13 p.m. Vatican time or in military and European time 2013, making for an astounding 313-2013 at 2013. According to Bullinger, as to the significance of 13, all are aware that it has come down to us as a number of ill omen. Many superstitions cluster around it and various explanations are current concerning them. It occurs first in Genesis 14.4, where we read, Twelve years they served Chaldor Lamar, and the thirteenth year they rebelled. Hence, every occurrence of the number thirteen, and likewise every multiple of it, stamps that which it stands in connection with, rebellion, apostasy, defection, corruption, disintegration, revolution, or some kindred idea. The Holy Spirit-filled church is what is restraining Satan. The moment we leave, his man, the Antichrist, appears to explain what just happened and to initiate the new world order. If you want to better understand why I'm looking at June 15th, 2022 as the day of the rapture, here are some videos to get you started. Thanks for watching.